Guess who's back? Back again. Mikey's back. Tell a friend. Hey everybody, here with another video for you guys today. And today we're going to be putting some IO Euro sticks and some cherry micro swip hat buttons into my big blue Street Fighter control panel. But before we go any further, let me just say if you like this video, any other videos on my channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be getting down into this big blue mod control panel after my intro coming in here now. And we're going to start this video by looking at the stock big blue control panel as well as look at some IL Euro sticks, uh, sticks and buttons that I'm going to be putting into this bad boy. And here's the stock control panel. And you can open it up, it's pretty simple. There's just a few screws here on the back and this, uh, go this goes for the light up uh, deck LED lights. But uh, as you can see, there's just a few screws. And you just take them off, and this little black thing will pop right off. And we can access the buttons and sticks. And then here we go. This is actually from Paradise Arcade. So I bought these from them. I usually buy most of my stuff through them. So shout out to them. And here's the cherry micro switches. best micro switches you can buy in my opinion and then here these are actually the red ones are official IL uh, buttons and then the blue ones here these are actually generic so I mean but they're so close I mean you really can't tell much of a difference in quality and then I actually had to get some orange ones as well because they ran out of red and because I'm going to be actually taking the blue out of my old original Wave 1 Street Fighter cabinet, the blue IL Euro stick and buttons, and I'm going to be putting those into my big blue as well as I had to get some new ones because I didn't have two joy blue joysticks. I only had one. There's my little man saying hi there. And then I'll be putting this red one back into my original Street Fighter uh, machine that I will eventually reskin down the road because I don't need two Street Fighter 2 cabinets in my arcade. And then here's the new blue IL Euro stick that I got. And, you know, for my money, these are the best uh, joysticks you can get. And this isn't actually the first video like this I've done. A link in here is my Mortal Kombat 2 where I installed some HAP competitions in it. I did this video a long time ago. I believe I was the first person on YouTube to put uh, HAP sticks into the Mortal Kombat machine. And then the second time I did it, I did the IL Euro sticks. I actually put them into my MVSX. Uh, really made a huge difference there. And so this is kind of the third time that I'm doing this and I really want to put the most effort into this video than I've done for any of the other ones to date as we're getting a look at the back of the control panel and here is the new joysticks that will be going in and I'm actually going to give you guys a little tip that I've discovered and I'm actually going to put the older one, the used one, in my player one spot because these joysticks do take a little bit to get warmed up, to get broken in and I found that the new ones are kind of a pain in the butt that after you've gotten them worked in a little bit they're actually better. And as you can see here this I already have the original joystick removed and I'll go through how these buttons go in you just slide there's little tabs you slide in there and it fits right into place and that's the way it's supposed to look. And then here I am. I was seeing if I had to Dremel this thing or not, if I could fit the IL Eurostick in 
but unfortunately there is not enough space so I'm gonna have to get a little creative there because I do not own a Dremel at this time but before I get into that I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit of a lesson on uh, soldering even though I am not a super skilled solderer by any stretch of the imagination I'm completely self-taught uh, it's really not that hard to do and in some of my other videos people have asked about it and here's some flux you're gonna need this you just kinda dip the hot tip of your soldering iron into it and then I get these little Brillo pads uh, the steel wool and you just use it to wipe the tip off if you get anything stuck on it and then here's just some basic solder you know nothing expensive just came with the soldering iron And then here is the soldering gun that I will be using for this, and I've been I've used it a lot. The tip is just about melted away, but I'm actually trying to do this on the cheap, so I'm not I'm altered the methods that I normally go about doing this, and I'll get into more of that later. And you just apply the solder to the tip of the iron like that, just get a little bit on there, and then you just apply it to the surface that you want to solder to, or at least this is the method that I find works the best. You know, you don't need a ton, just get a little bit on to each point. And once it gets on there, then you just go and you put a little bit on the end of the wire and then just let it let the metal do the work, the heat in the metal, and lo and behold, it's attached right on in, in there. It's really not all that difficult to do. I know a lot of people when they think of soldering they automatically get super scared and worried and it's it's really not all that difficult, especially things like this. I've uh, tackled uh, some much more difficult uh, soldering projects in the past. I'll actually put a link to my Ghostbusters Proton Pack video here because that one is far more challenging project than working on these uh, arcade one-up control panels to be honest with you guys. And here's another one. I'll just give you another example of what it's like because it's really, it's really not all that complicated. And again, this isn't. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this uh, procedure if you had the wire crimping terminals. They are better than soldering, or I mean, it's easier. You know, you don't have to solder, obviously. But I don't have enough of them to go to do this project. I, I'm. This is my Christmas vacation. And, you know, it's the middle of the afternoon. I really don't want to run to the store, and I'm trying to do this project on the cheap. You know, so I'm just using what I have in my house, and so I can just solder them on there, and everything should work fine. So that's the that's what I decided to do here on this particular project. As you can see, as I'm putting more on the tip of the iron there just attaching it and there it is and they're all nice and secure looking good and now I have the buttons for player one all done so I wanted to give you guys a good look at it so, like I said, it's really not all that challenging to do this stuff, and, and a lot of people get scared away, or or they end up putting sandwas in this thing. Even though, in my opinion, you shouldn't put sandwas in it. You should put IL Euro sticks or HAP competitions. And here I have here's a close up of the entire. All the buttons are done at this point. Some of the wires weren't quite long enough, so I had to put a little extensions on them just to make it a little bit longer. But again, if you know how to solder, it's real, you know, basic just to, you know, make the wires a little bit longer there. Arcade one-up control panels, they don't really intend people to do this, so they don't give you a lot of room, you know, with extra wires and whatnot always. And then I ran in, well, like I said, the problem with it being too big. So actually, I don't have a Dremel, so I had to find a way to just shorten this up. And if you got some nice kind of tin snips or some kind of shrub, you know, hedge clippers or something, that's what I ended up using. And I was able to just, you know, trim it off, you know, just enough uh, and keep. So I, I had to get rid of one of the screw holes because there's actually, you know, an, enough screw holes to for two different spots in each area so I had to cut the smaller one off 
but I have enough to still keep everything attached and it won't affect gameplay whatsoever and you'll never know that it's like that as you can see I got it all attached in like that and again it wasn't really hard to cut the plastic on this thing I was surprised at how easily I was able to get it again if you have some decent tin snips it shouldn't be a problem and here is a nice slow close-up of the entire panel now that is completed with all player one and two and again, I did everything one button at a time, one joystick at a time. You know, even when I'm doing the joysticks, I do one micro switch at a time just so I didn't make any mistakes. And here it is, all done. Everything is assembled, got it back together, and it is just a night and day difference. And I highly, highly recommend that anybody and everybody, that, that if you have Big Blue or any of these online cabs and you want to play these fighting games against people, you really need to go through and do this. And then here is the moment of truth. Let's see what happens when we fire this thing up, see if it actually works. See if, let's test my soldering skills. As we fire it up right on up there. Machine takes a second to turn on. Let's uh, turn the deck light on. Gotta go with the blue. That's why I want the blue joysticks. Other than the Bobby Vu special, who has a nicer looking control panel than, than I got? I, I, I ask you, and I, my answer is nobody. You see all the buttons and everything appears to be working. Everything on player one works. Now let's check player two. And in case you didn't notice, I did not change the player one start, player two start, or the live button because you don't use them enough. I mean, it was just an extra expense that I didn't really feel like getting into. It's really the gameplay buttons that I was the most concerned with. Well, there it is, folks. That is my video for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos here on Mikey J Productions. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.